In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create these data labels here at the very end, which is a sum total, as you can see here. And if I hide one, it will show that one. And if I hide them both, it will disappear as well. And if I show them again, make them visible, it will nicely realign itself and show again the numbers. So to do this, what we're going to do here, first of all, is make sure you get the boiler template, which you can find here on chartjs 3com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, just copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, join the Discord channel, put your question here. All these links are in the description box. All right, so what we're going to do here is we have this item here. And what I want here, first of all, is to get this or have a second data set. So I'm going to copy this, comma, paste, and then I'm going to just remove all of those and just give some random numbers here or at least some different numbers so we can see the differences later on. Let's call this the black sales because this is the black bar. Now I want to stack them on top of each other. To do that, I go here on the X scale, say comma here and then stack equals true, and it will copy this Put this down here as well save refresh there we are now what i want to do here is rotate this or at least swap these two axes to make it a horizontal bar chart so i say index axis will be based on y save refresh there we are and now we have all of these here what i want to make sure is that if we have this later on shortened or we hide one of those that we have space here always. We always want to have some additional space. So what I'm going to say here, and this is related to the X scale, I'm going to say here, comma, and then grace, and let's give this one stack or one tick additional, or at least one value more, that if I hide this, you can see here we have a lot of extra space. You can do more, two if you want, or or more depends on yourself. There we are, we have a bit more space that maybe looks a bit more nicer. So what I'm going to do now is start to create the plugin. And for the plugin, I'm going to say comma plugins. And then we're going to say here that some data labels, um, horizontal bar, a data label horizontal, copy this. Then what I'm going to say here, constant equals that equals the ID of this, of course, make sure we have no space between there. Then I'm going to say here, after data sets draw because i want to draw this after the data set so i'm going to say this there we are and now what i want to do here is an object destructuring so i say constant equals chart if you don't understand what object destructuring is please check out my other video in the description box so now we have this i want the ctx and i probably want the scales x and y although i don't think we need the x or maybe we might we'll see later on so what I want to do now, the first thing is I want to have, because we only have two data sets and that is specifically related to this question. I want to compare one or the other, or at least I want to get the details of these data sets here. From first data set one or index zero. And then after data set number two, which is index one. To do this, I'm going to use a special built-in function, which is called chart.getDataSetMeta index and then we put in here the zero, zero for data set zero once i did this open up the developer tab you can see we can get all the information of weekly sales which is the colored item this one here is the black sales so we can do the same logic for this let's put number one there we are open up this and we can see here now black sales which is the second data set so what i'm going to do now i just use this as a shorthand it's going to say a constant data set meta zero equals zero and then of course the same one but then the opposite direction number one say here one save there we are uh, missing initializer uh, what is this of course that is not what i want to do this should be one or zero and one this is not a function of course the function is here so now, what I want to do here is loop through all of these data points. 
because we have now the data set, but now I want to loop through them and get the X and Y coordinates so we can put the value at the very end here. And later on, if I hide one of those, we should put the value or readjust the position of the label. So to do this, I'm going to use a for each loop and we go into here and specifically into the data. So I'm going to say here, let's grab this one first, data set index zero dot data and then here dot for each. So here we can say here data point comma index function arrow expression. There you are. So once we've got this, what I want to do here now is start to draw something and afterwards we can fine tune this nicely. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say ctx.save. Then what I want to do here is the font. So I say ctx.font type or font. Then I'm going to say here, this will be bold, 12 pixels, sans serif. Once I have this, I would like to put in the text. So I'm going to say ctx.fill text. And then maybe we should have a color, I realize. So I say ctx.fill style to give it a color and I'll make this black for now. And what I'm going to do here in the field text is the following. I want to grab here the text, whatever the text will be, the X and Y coordinates. Since we have this here, I'm going to show you how we can extract the X and Y coordinates very easily because we are basically here in the data. Then in here, this data, whatever the index is, well, from this data, whatever the index is, we won't get the X and Y coordinates. And, and probably it's nice to have a visual of that. So what I'm going to do here, console log, put this in here. Then we're going to say here, whatever the index is, and then dot X or Y, or I just leave it like that. And you'll see it will break it down with an X and Y coordinate. So let's hide this for now because we don't want to draw anything yet. Save this, refresh. And as we do this, you can see we get the X and Y coordinates here, which is very useful for us. So what I'm going to do now is the following is, and you can see by the way, if this is hidden, it will start to change as well or give us some of these additional information. Anyway, what I want to do now is get the X and Y coordinates specifically of each item. So I'm going to say here dot X. And then what I'm going to do here, we're going to say here dot Y. However, this here, must be converted. Well, these are already uh, pixel coordinates. So if I save this, let's make sure that we have a string value for this for now. Save this, refresh. We're getting a proper position. However, if I hide one of them, look what's going on. It's starting to do all kind of weird items that we don't want. So we need to make sure that this is intelligent enough to understand what it's doing when we are hidden. And of course, right now you can see here the text. I don't like the text. It should be at the very end, but what it does need is additional pixels here. So what I'm going to say here first for the Y or sorry for the X plus 12 pixels, save that refresh. There we are. So now we have some padding around that. Now what I need to do is get the value. So let's go on to get the value here. How do we get this value? We can basically say here this data point and then uh, well, let's see if it's a data point here. We can probably say more specifically is I realize that we need to calculate that. So what I will do is for now, let's use a function and later on we need to calculate correctly the position. So we say X dot get the value for the pixel and the pixel value right now is this X coordinate or even this one, we can do this dot X which basically gives us the same information. And if I save this refresh, you can see here it works, but we should fine tune this or round it to the nearest full number or whole number. So what I'm going to do here is dot two fixed index for value zero. So no decimals at all. There we are. So that starts to work, but we're not done because we're in the wrong position. We need to go to the very end. To do this, we need to consider when something is hidden, because here's the interesting part. If I hide this, what really happens is the items are suddenly disappearing, but for some weird reason, this will stay here or it's not that bad. It's like it doubles or it does something here. It doubles the value and then 
it still has this specific value in here. So what we need to do is we need to basically push it to the very end or well, we copy it first to here. And if we have them both hidden, they should be completely gone from the screen. That makes sense. So let's start to work on that. This logic is quite tricky, so pay attention. The first thing what I want to do here now is uh, create here two new led values. These led values will be x0, which is basically what we did here on the data set here. But then what I will do is I will first check if this specific data set would be hidden. So what I'm going to say here is, uh, oh, not yet, sorry. I'll do it like this. So we have a shorthand so that this later on can be easier. And then what we want to do as well is we have here another one is the let one. And this, of course, is data set meta one from this here. So what I want to do now is I want to compare which one would be showing. And then I can start to push the position or recalculate the position of this. Because this here, because if it's hidden, it should be the position of zero. So that it will just, even if it calculates, it will be nicely aligned to here. So what I'm going to do now is the following. I'm going to say here, let's put in here let value. This value is a hoisting. And then what I'm going to do here is create an if statement. And this if statement will say if x0, whatever the value is, would be bigger than 0, in that case, we're going to grab this uh, value. Uh, hold on. Uh, oh yeah, well, that's fine. But then n if x1 is bigger than 0. So that would mean that we need to have values at all. So once we have this, what I want to do is, I will say here x0, is it hidden, yes or no? So if it is hidden, so I'm going to say here, data set meta dot hidden. If it is hidden, set the value to zero. If it is not hidden, give me the exact value of whatever it is, the position of it. That makes all sense. So we're going to do the same here with one and one. And make sure this here will be the value of one because it's related to that specific item. So now we have this because this value here doesn't understand exactly what it is or it has no assigned value to it. We're going to assign it now. So what I'm going to do here now is say value will be one or the other. So what I'm going to do here is if x0 will be bigger than x1, in that case, give me x0. If that is not the case, give me x1. So what we're really doing here is, if it is hidden, put the value of 0. And if it's not, keep it like that. And if this one is hidden, give that the value of 0. So what this really does is the following. It will calculate because as we go more to the right, the value here is higher. That will mean that data set 2 will be higher, or sorry, this data set will have a higher value here than this one. But if it's hidden, it changes here. We will assign this as 0, and the same would be for this as well. Then the black would be 0, but this one will have here this value. Sounds all very complicated, but it's just the logic to calculate the position. So now I have this. What I can do here, let's see if I can just put this in here, or do we need to do an if statement as well? So for this, we're going to grab here the value because look, look at this. This is 18, but I don't want 18 because I want 18 plus 6 would be 24. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to just grab this value, whatever it's higher. Put it in here, save, refresh. If we do this, all right, so that's 24. And now it's 18. So it understands the logic. Now can it understand the position? So I'm going to grab this and then maybe we can put it in here, the value here, save, refresh. And now if I hide this, there we are. It will know immediately what it does. So you can see here, if I click this, it looks like it goes down, but it's not the case. It's just like it jumps back to the very end and recalculate. You can see here, this works nicely. This works nicely as well. Oh, but as you can see here, I realize that this one here goes to zero. So what I need to do here 
if all of them are zero the value needs to be basically completely uh, removed so what I can do here because then in that case it's both is considered hidden so what I'm going to say here just as a final if it is not data set hidden zero and because it must be both they must be both not hidden in that case because or else it will become position zero so we're going to grab this one and not hidden for data set meta one if that is the case we will draw this structure or else we won't draw at all say refresh there we are hide this uh all right interesting and uh, not hidden or oh sorry we can have them both it must be or let's do this all right let's do that there we are it's gone put it back put it back hide this show that hide this and there it is so that looks absolutely phenomenal and now it's working nicely